morning, everyone. Let's pray. We welcome you in our presence, best Father of all. Bless us this morning, even as we go to your word. We expect nothing less than your blessing, encouragement, and if necessary, your correction so that we can become more and more like you. Thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm going to be uh, borrowing many materials from this organization called The World Needs a Father. Papa. Uh, according to this organization, fatherlessness is an urgent, devastating global catastrophe. Well, you're blessed if you have the eight fathers we watched a while ago. They're all God-fearing people, so they're able to raise God-fearing children. But not all children are blessed to have those kinds of father. In the real world that we live in, there are many, many fathers who actually have failed in many ways. And the reason why I follow this group, this organization, because I personally believe this is a necessity in our days today because fatherlessness is indeed an urgent, devastating global catastrophe. We can only pray and hope that God will continue to raise godly, earthly fathers. Let me begin by a video I watch upon the prodding of my wife, Ellen. Ellen loves to, you know, watch videos, especially during the pandemic and lockdown. Siguro lahat yata ng video na panood na ho niya. Wala ho siyang magawa sa bahay ng lockdown. Then she came upon this video. An orphan woman for more than 23 years never knew her dad. It so happened, yung mother ho niya, um, you know, works in a very, I don't want to mention the, the word or the, the profession, but then his, her mom has many, many men in her life. And so, nabuntis siya, sinilang po itong si, si babae, and she never met her dad. So her life actually went down the drain in a way. You know, she actually ended up living with another woman right now. And in all those 23 years, she felt this emptiness in her heart. She felt there's something missing. There's this longing there's this, this sense of, I want to belong. I want to know, know my creator. I want to know, I want to know who, who's my dad. So with the aid of social media, uh, blood tests, etc., she found her dad. Okay, her dad was actually a uh, retired U.S. Navy man. So after 23 years, they were reunited. And if you watch the video, the tears were overflowing bottomless tears, in other words. I was so touched because after watching this video, I realized somehow in each and everyone's heart of us here, we all long for a dad. We all want to have a dad. We all want to feel that, you know, uh, somebody loved us and, and, and we love to love that person who actually gave us life. So to just to further, you know, emphasize the point by the world needs a father. It says here, I, probably you know this already, research has shown that dysfunctional family life is the biggest problem with fatherlessness at the center of the problem. Just the, the woman in the video, she actually ends up living with another woman right now. So because there's no guidance, no direction. And I think if you came from that kind of family, you would also agree with this statement. You know, uh, a fatherless family or home would often lead to many things, one of which is poverty. Children in father-absent homes are almost four times more likely to be poor. And this is not just Marites, this is actually based on statistics, okay? Secondly, drug and alcohol abuse. There is significantly more drug use among children who do not live with their father and their mother. Thirdly, physical and emotional health. A study of 1,977 children aged three and older living with a residential father or father figure 
found that children living with married biological parents had significantly fewer behavioral problems as compared to those who are not living with their parents. Fourthly, children in grades 7 to 12 who have lived with at least one biological parent reported lower grade point averages than those who have always lived with both biological parents. There's this support, moral support from both parents. Okay? 71% of high school drops out are actually fatherless. I uh, studied in Chiang Kai-shek College, and I kind of rem re uh, remember or recall those who were kicked out of Chiang Kai, most of them actually came from dysfunctional family. Most of them. Not all, but many of them. Crime. Compared to peers in intact families, adolescents in single-parent families and step-families were more likely to engage in delinquency. This is very, very true. Sexual activity and teen pregnancy. Okay? I think this does not need further explanation. You know, recently we just hired a house helper, uh, a uh, kasambahay. At first, uh, I disagreed to that idea because all my kids are grown-ups, no? So we don't need house help anymore. I do the laundry, and I'm proud to say I'm still the laundry man in our family. Kaya lumalaki ang aking mga biceps and triceps with all the piga, palo-palo, and whatever. But then my wife, you know, contacted a teenage sakao, uh, 19 years old from Mindanao. Uh, she came to Manila to work. Sadly, yung unang employer niya, inaabuso siya. When uh, she was looking for work, my, mom, my wife contacted her. So I said, we don't need a helper now. We can be urban. Then, then I found out she's a single mom, a teenage mom. She got pregnant at 17, no? got separated uh, when he, she was 18, and now she's actually looking for a job for her one-year-old daughter. Then I interviewed her. I, re I found out her dad, she never met her dad. Okay? Yung patkito in laupe. Again, her mom is also, you know, marami siyang uh, relationship. Sabi pa nga niya sa akin, yung nanay ko, no, laklakero na, umiinom daw, lalakero pa, okay yun na, laklakero na, lalakero pa. Siya nagsabi na hindi ako. So upon hearing her problem, her background, I decided, sige, Let's help her you know, for her uh, uh, baby daughter's um, uh, benefit. So this is true, very true. Uh, children who grew up with, you know, uh, fatherless homes would, you know, had this tendency to be involved in early sexual activity and even teen pregnancy. Now let me go to the passage this morning. I remember I preached this before, but now God is giving me another angle or another insight. John 14, verse 8, Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. What's the context? If you heard me preach this before, I encourage you to read John 14. It's not a long chapter, more or less 30 verses lang po yan. You can read it in just one to five minutes. And I guarantee you, after reading John 14, you will not be the same if you're reading it with a hungry heart, and with, a, with a heart seeking the will of God. The context is simple. Jesus is saying, I'm leaving you guys. He's talking to his disciples. I'm going to be arrested, in prison. I'll be killed, etc. And all the disciples opposed to that idea. They were saying, what will happen to us? We will be orphaned. You're our leader. You're the leader of the band. Okay? It's like you are, you are our father. You're the boss. Diba? What will become of us if you leave us? In fact, to the point, Peter would say, over my dead body, I will not allow that to happen to you. That was a context. And then Jesus said, don't worry. In my Father's house, there are many, many rooms. I go there to prepare a place for you. And Thomas says, show us the way. Where are you going? We don't know. Then Jesus said the very iconic verse, John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. When Philip heard those words, he said, Oh, then show me the Father, and that will be enough for us. I asked a question, why did Philip ask that question or said that statement? He could have said, show me God, and that will be enough for me. 
Or he could, have, he could have said, show me more money, more blessings, more material things, and that will be enough for me. But he didn't say those words. He said, show me the Father, which made me realize perhaps Philip has been longing for a father for a long, long time. Maybe he also had a, an absentee father. Huh? Maybe he, his father may be around with him, but his father not, does not have time with him. Okay, there are many fathers na lagi naman nasa bahay, pero lagi na atutok po sa TV. Di ba? Iba pa, naglalaro pa ng computer games. Walang time sa ilang mga anak. Maybe Philip is one of those who's shouting, I need a father. Why did he say those words? Incidentally, the word father here, from its original word, pater, okay, means a nourisher, a protector, and a upholder. Very powerful words. Very heavy, the words talaga. No? Nourisher, protector, upholder. If you're a father, ask yourself, are you a nourisher? Are you a protector? Are you an upholder? Or you lift your children up, especially when they are down. Philip used that word. I need a nourisher. I need somebody who can protect me, who can make me feel safe and secure in this very dangerous world. I need somebody who will lift me up whenever I am down. And the word enough in this sentence, very short sentence, but very profound, is to be sufficient, to be strengthened. When somebody nourishes you, you become strengthened, right? When you eat something, some nourish, nourishing food, you become strengthened. Okay? When somebody is protecting you, you feel safe, you feel sufficient. No lack, no need. You know, see, if somebody, somebody is lifting you up, you will say, I'm okay, I'm good. I'm stronger than I was before. All right? So Philip says, said those words, show me the Father and that will be enough for me. Maybe that's your heart cry also this morning just like the heart cry of that woman in that video. For 23 years, she's been crying, I want to know who my dad is. I want to know who, who, who made me. I want to know who brought me into this world. Yeah, we thank God for good mothers. But to be honest with you, there are not enough. We still long for a father and a mother. Papa, mama, we want both parents. We want to know them. We want to know our identity in our parents, especially in our fathers. And so, how do we overcome this? Again, based on chapter 14, when, when, when Philip said, show me the father and it will be enough. Okay, how do we okay, overcome fatherlessness? How do we you know, see that the world needs a father comes to fruition? The people who do not know their father will be able to know them. Again, thank God for good earthly fathers. Thank God for Rev. Ham, Elder Ben, Dr. Nelson. Is Dr. Nelson here? Yeah. And for, for Apon here, no? Talaga si Apon niya, no? Alalay, bantay, no? yung mga words niya, ang galing, you know? Talagang parang hindi, di ba? Thank you for all these good parents. But again, not everyone is blessed to have a good father. How do we overcome that? You know, Jesus said, you've got to know me. When, P, when Philip asked a question, or when he said, show me the Father, you know, Jesus responded by saying what? He said, Philip, I've been with you for a long time. We're together for three years, more than three years. How can you say you do not know me? How can you say you do not know the Father? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Okay? Don't you believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? Even if your earthly father failed you, you always have a fallback and the best fallback, if I can use that term. You can go to your Father in heaven. The emptiness that is in your heart cannot be replaced by the love of even an earthly father. You will still end up empty and longing for a, the, the, the love of a real father. All fathers on earth are foster fathers. They may be your biological dad, but they're not your real father. Your real father, my real father, is him. 
the greatest dad of all. If you know Jesus, if you have seen Jesus in the spirit, okay, in your heart, in your mind, then you have seen the Father. And you will feel it is enough. I'm strengthened. I am nourished. I'm protected. Okay? It will be enough, as Jesus said, because the Father and Jesus, they are one. Knowing Jesus is the key to overcoming fatherlessness. I've talked to many all right, people who came from orphan backgrounds, no parents whatsoever, but when they found Jesus, or should I say Jesus found them, it changed their lives completely. The emptiness is gone. It's overflowing with joy, love, and peace. That's a key. Know Jesus. Because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You cannot know the Father except through me. It has to be Jesus. The only way for us to overcome the spirit of fatherlessness. You know, according to TWNAF, a father establishes identity. Those without a father, you always feel like, Sino ba ako? Di ba? No, you always ask yourself, Waan ko doon lahaya? Kung lao po isi siya nga? Wa si siya nga? If you do not know your creator, you will always be in identity crisis. Okay? But if you know your father, it avoids identity confusion. Sino ba ako? Sino ba sila? No, si, no, si, balasi, etc., etc. You ask those questions. Filter the past, okay? You end up making right choices because you know your God is a good God. Your father is a kind father. You become who you worship. Knowing Jesus is key to overcoming fatherlessness. It helps you identify who you are. The reason why we make wrong choices is because we do not know who we are. We do not know that our God is forgiving, our Father is loving, our Father is generous. We do not know. So Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Let's go to Jesus. Let's know Him deeply. Let's, you know, you know, intimately know Him. And that will help you overcome your feeling of emptiness and longingness for a father. Secondly, the same chapter, Jesus said these words, love me, love Jesus. This may be very simple uh, steps, but you know, it's not easy to do. You may say, oh, I've heard that a thousand times, but it's not easy to do. Easier said than done, as they say, knowing, I know Jesus. Everybody in the Philippines know Jesus. Oh, they're from Aparit to Holo. They all know Jesus, but not all of them love Jesus. And how do you prove you love Jesus? You obey Him. John 14, 21, Jesus said, Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. We know His commands, right? Somebody even memorized the commands of God, the Ten Commandments. The Jews, they know all the commands of Moses, the law of Moses. They memorize it by heart. Many of us know the command of God, but very few of us keeps them or follow them. Notice what Jesus said, the one who loves me will be loved by my Father. It's not enough to know Jesus. It's not enough to pray the sinner's prayer. Because unless you obey Him, you do not prove that you love Him. And Jesus explicitly says here, those who loves me will be loved by my Father. Do we love Jesus? And how do we prove our love for Jesus? We obey Him. Once you obey Him, our Father in heaven will love us. And Jesus says, I too will love them and show myself to them, which make me realize apart from obeying Jesus, we can always be fatherless. You can come to church every Sunday. You can watch live stream every Sunday or even every day of your earthly life. But without obeying Jesus, you are still a fatherless person. You will never feel complete. You never feel like I'm nourished, I'm protected. I'm uplifted. 
You never say, I'm satisfied, I'm content. You never say, I'm happy, I'm full, overflowing. Because unless you obey Him, Jesus, the Father cannot love you. Now, he may say, oh, ba may grace? Yeah, we know about grace. There's no debate about grace. We're all saved by grace. Yes, we don't have to do anything, okay? But just receive the grace of Jesus. And we're saved. He paid the penalty of sins once and for all on the cross. But speaking of this passage, it has nothing to do with your salvation. It's more it has to do with the feeling of I'm complete. I'm loved. The Father will love you, especially you love Jesus by obeying His command. You know, if you speak of love, you create this environment of security. Diba? People who are insecure, kulang sa pag-ibig yan. KSP. Kulang sa pag-ibig. Yung iba, kulang sa pansin. Yung malaas kumain, kulang sa pansit. Okay? So, a father provides security. If you know Jesus, if you love Jesus, if He loves you back, when He loves you back, it creates an environment of love. There's this emotional stability, communication through prayers, and, and physical safety. You can feel it, actually. You can feel it. That is, you have to love Jesus first so that the Father will love you and I. He will love us also, Jesus, and He will show Himself to us. Know Jesus, love Jesus. Lastly, you know, I overlooked this before. Then, you know, when, the, the beautiful thing about studying the Word of God, you never get enough of the Word of God. Amen? You never, you just when you think, ah, alam ko na lahat yan. You read it again. Then you see, oh, there's another angle. There's another insight. There's another truth waiting to be discovered, waiting to be unfolded before your eyes. I missed this one out before. You know, the third thing you and I need to do when we want to overcome this fatherlessness feeling is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember, Jesus was saying goodbye to His disciples. He was saying, you know, I'm leaving you guys, right? But, I'm, I, I, but don't worry. I'll send somebody exactly like me. And that someone is the Holy Spirit. That someone, okay, is, is just like me, okay? And He will help you. He will be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. Sadly, there are Christian churches who actually denies the ministry of the Holy Spirit. To them, it's only Father and Son, walang Holy Spirit. And that's why many churches are fatherless churches in this world. You cannot be complete without the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I will send the Spirit to you. If we know Jesus, if we love Jesus, and we receive the Holy Spirit, we're filled by the Holy Spirit every single day, then that feeling of emptiness will just disappear. It will just evaporate into thin air. You won't feel alone at all. Almost every day when I pray, I would always ask, Holy Spirit, fill me. Fill me. Especially with the, the, the fruit of the Spirit because easily our fruit can actually fall off from us. Diba, Reverend Hem? What are the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. Mabilis malaglag yung mga prutas natin. Di ba? Sa dami ng problema sa mundo, ay aking kanya ko, nabubulok yung ating mga prutas. Every single day, I have to go to God and say, God, fill me up with your Holy Spirit. With the fruit of love, joy, peace. I need those for me to be nourished to be protected, and to be uphold or lifted up. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Forever. 
in one huh? the spirit of truth the holy spirit have you prayed to the holy spirit brothers and sisters in christ also first pray to the to the father yeah we pray to jesus but have you prayed to the holy spirit have you even tried praying to the holy spirit that's not heresy that's not wrong doctrine that's biblical you can talk to the holy spirit you can pray to the holy spirit you can ask the holy spirit to fill you up so that you will overcome this emptiness this meaninglessness in life a father an earthly father or our father the ideal father establishes authority helps you and i you know have this kind of authority by being good moral examples to us grounded in the absolute word of god authority of the word and being filled by the spirit obeying a purified conscience avoids and confronts immoral activities a father submits accountability and assume disciplinary responsibility that comes the holy spirit will teach us today the bible says jesus said he will teach you he will remind you he will correct you he will lead you and maybe the reason why you're feeling i don't know where to go i don't know what to do maybe you do not have the holy spirit maybe you do not really acknowledge the work of the holy spirit in your life we need the holy spirit every single day we pray holy spirit lead me guide me read romans 8 chapter 8 you understand the ministry of the holy spirit the spirit will convict you the spirit will will you will even speak to your heart the spirit will remind you the spirit will you know empower you and encourage you we need the holy spirit as jesus said he will send the holy spirit to us and we will not feel unloved anymore amen lastly okay now i notice with myself the older i get the shorter my sermons become you know why i ask myself back there wala na akong may kwento eh no naubos na in 32 years of ministry naubos na eh hindi ako maano sa sa Marites yung Maritesan si Apo niya daw sa Marites sabi ni I I see the good Samarites okay I I discover you know myself uh, the older I get I want to preach shorter messages because I easily get tired na ngayon but anyway let me end here you watched this movie before? How many of you have watched this movie before? Have you? Oh, marami si Dungaling dito. Ginunod ng Netflix. Okay. Life is beautiful. Watch this, please. If you want to be blessed. Okay. It's fiction, of course, but inspired by a true story. It won the Best Foreign uh, Picture, 1997 Oscars. Won Best Director, yata, and I think Best Actor then. Okay beautiful movie not real but inspired okay the story of a father okay who was actually uh, uh, arrested with his wife family and his son and put in a concentration camp it happened in the holocaust a father loved his son so much you know what he shielded his son from the reality of holocaust he told his son, Anak, we're just playing a game. Don't worry. We're going to be playing hide and seek. No? And the soldiers will come and try to arrest us. We'll just hide. And the, the entire you know, scenario was just a game. He wanted to assure his son, you have nothing to be afraid of. Daddy is here. It's just a game. And we will soon come out of this alive. And the whole movie was father and son playing a game in the middle of the horrors of the Holocaust. When said, inspired by true story, the father of this actor was actually a survivor of the Holocaust. You know, the whole picture, dad was shielding, nourishing, protecting, upholding his son until the end of the movie, the dad was arrested, okay, the son, he hid him in a small box. Oh, diyan ka muna. Tago, tago, ha? Huwag kang lalabas pag wala si daddy. Alright? And the son hid there until the Americans came and, and liberated them from 
from Nazi, you know, people. But the dad was killed. The son was reunited with his uh, mom, but he never knew the horrors of Holocaust because the father became a shield. The father became a shock absorber. He absorbed all the pains in the Holocaust, in the concentration camp. That's what father should be. shock absorber. As a father, you have to provide, you know, even in this very demanding generation, you have to provide for everything. Magkamali ka ng konti lang, yun ang makikita yung mali mo. Di ba? Di mo lang mabilhan ng iPhone 17 yung anak mo. Magta- Meron na bang iPhone 17? Wala pa siguro. Advance ako mag-isip. Di ba? Wala lang iPhone 17, gagalit yung anak mo sa'yo, nagtatampo na. Anong klaseng tatay? Pambihira. iPhone? You question what kind of a father I am? I like this movie, b- 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 movie so much. Watch it. You see the kind of father you and I all long for. And speaking of, you know, fathers who failed, I want to read this message. I, I, received, I, I, I found this online, okay? I want to go through it now. I just found this a few days ago. It speaks of a certain king who had 10 wild dogs. He used these dogs to torture and eat any of his servants who made a mistake. So one of the servants gave a very wrong advice. The king did not like it. So he ordered the other servants to throw this servant to the dogs. The servant said to the king, I serve you for 10 years faithfully, and this is just my first mistake. Please don't do this to me. But the king was adamant. He said, no, you deserve to die. Throw him into or throw him to the dogs. The servant just made a very funny request. He said, please give me 10 days. 10 days. Let me feed the dogs, bait them, clean their, 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 their living quarters. Give me just 10 days. So the king, okay, said, if that is your dying man's wish, go ahead. So the servant, for 10 days, fed the dogs, bait them, served the dogs. And when the day of his execution came, the king was surprised. When the servant entered into that, you know, the den of dogs, the dogs did not bite him, did not eat him. The dogs began to lick the feet of the servant. The king baffled, saying, What has happened to my Rottweilers? What has happened to my pit bulls? And the servant replied, I served the dog for only 10 days. But they did not forget my kindness and my service. I served you for whole 10 years and you forgot all because of one mistake. The king realized his mistake, ordered the servant to be set free. To all the children in this congregation today, even if your father failed you once or twice, or let's just say, paulit ulit, never forget yung ginawa niya para sa iyo. Kasi pai pai iya si di elau pe parin. And even if, you know, after everything, he will still fail you, look up to your father in heaven. Know Jesus, obey Jesus. Ask the Spirit to fill you. I'm sure you find some good in your Father. I'm sure I see you win. I see you win. In closing, sorry, in closing, in closing, overtime na ako. Ano ko ba tumatanda na kung di ha? Tadago po lang kwento. No? My wife, you know, her dad passed away almost three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Her dad left her when she was eight, 
They've never seen each other for more than 38 years. Her dad went over the back road, you know, had his another family. So you know the story, right? Then her dad passed on. Akala ko hindi kami pupunta sa burol. But I was surprised to see Ellen and said, let's go. You know? So we went. You know, I saw in the heart of my wife, Ellen, the forgiveness extended to his dad. And first time, namit niya lahat ng kanyang mga kapatid sa abilang bakod. <laughs> okay. Nagkaroon sila ng pang mini reunion. And I was happy for her. You know, she never had a good father. Her father failed her many, many times. But she found it in her heart to see the good in her father because she knew her earthly father, her heavenly father. She knew Jesus. She obeyed Jesus. She has the Holy Spirit. So she can go to the other side and say, all is forgiven. No? We can start anew. That's what happened to Ellen. Closure finally. Shall we all rise, please? Yes, the world needs a father. A good father. A father who nourishes. A father who protects, who makes you, who make you feel safe and secure. A father who will uphold you, lift you up, especially when you are down. Especially when you, you feel like the burden is so heavy to carry and you can't go one step further. Many of us here, we want to be enough in our hearts. We want to have this feeling of, I'm content, I'm satisfied. We want to be strong in times, you know, challenges arise. It can only happen, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you go to your heavenly Father, the best dad ever. Do not even try to compare your earthly father with our heavenly Father. You'll be disappointed in many ways. But you go and look at the Father in heaven. Look at Him. Look at Jesus. As the song would go, so, you know, fix your eyes on Jesus. You know? And you just feel all the emptiness, all the bitterness, all the unforgiveness, you know, just ebbing away. And in your heart, will you'll find us the space to love your earthly father, even if he has failed you. Let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for speaking to our hearts this morning. Indeed, we need you. Because no matter how well-meaning, how kind, how good our earthly dad can be, it won't be enough because they're also humans like us. They're also sinners like us. A blind man can never lead another blind man. Both of them will fall into the pit. What we need is a father in you. A father like Philip says, show me the nourisher, the protector, the upholder, and I will be satisfied. Please, Father, show yourself to us today through your Son, Jesus Christ. Send your Holy Spirit. Fill us every single day. Fill us every single day to help us overcome this spirit of emptiness, fatherlessness. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We glorify and magnify you. Amen. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name. He know the earth. Glorify thy name. Glorify thy name.
glorify His name with me. Glorify Thy name. Glorify Thy name. Glorify Thy name in all the earth. For the last time, shout it out loud. Thy name, glorify thy name, glorify thy name in all the earth. May the unconditional love of our Father in heaven. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the filling, the infilling, the leading, indwelling of the Holy Spirit be upon each and one of us, both now and forevermore. Amen. service is ended.